Hello, my friends. Today's book is titled Wake Up, Groundhog by Susanna Leonard Hill, illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler. Wake up, Groundhog. Phyllis was not like the other groundhogs. She liked to get up in February instead of March. She liked to be outdoors instead of indoors. When spring rains soaked the earth and everyone else huddled in their burrow, Phyllis splashed in the puddles. You're sopping wet, her mother scolded. I like the way mud feels between my toes, Mama, Phyllis explained. Her mother just shook her head and said to Phyllis's father, that's Phyllis. When the stream water rushed icy cold and fierce between the banks, Phyllis went waiting. You'll catch a cold, Aunt Patsy warned. Phyllis's mother just shook her head. That's Phyllis. When the August sun beat down, turning the meadow brown, Phyllis picked blackberries and warm, warm and sweet. You'll bake in this heat, Aunt Sassy cried. And guess what Phyllis's mother said? That's Phyllis. When I grow up, Mama, Phyllis said, I'm going to be Poxitani Phil. Don't be silly, dear, her mother said. Poxitani Phil is a fellow. All the other grown-ups laughed, but Phyllis knew she could do it, even if no one took her seriously. Then one February morning, Phyllis woke up early. She crawled out of bed and crept up the tunnel. The first light of morning shone at the mouth of the groundhog hole. From the big pine trees came a steady drip, drip, drip of snow melting. Running water whispered in the brook. The air was sharp, but something about it had changed. Spring was coming early. Phyllis skipped back down the tunnel and waited for Uncle Phil to wake up and make his prediction. Phyllis, would you quit wiggling? Explained Phil Jr. Yeah, Phyllis, said P. Some of us are trying to sleep. How can you sleep when spring is in the air? Said Phyllis. Phil Jr. looked at Pete. Only Phyllis would think spring is coming in the middle of winter, he said. It's not the middle of winter. Phyllis said, it's Groundhog's Day. But Phil Jr. and Pete were already dozing back to sleep. Pretty soon, Aunt Sassy got up and tried to wake up Uncle Phil. She shook him and tugged at his whiskers. She tried shouting in his ear. Everyone else was awake in the burrow, but Uncle Phil kept right on snoring. What's all this ruckus? Asked old Grandfather Groundhog. It's Groundhog's Day, said Aunt Sassy, and Phil's still asleep. I'm afraid he's getting too old for this job. Oh, I will do it, I'll do it, Phyllis said eagerly, and everyone just laughed. Poxitani Phil has never been a girl, said Pete, and never will be, said Phil Jr. Nobody's going to get the job until Phil gives it up, said Aunt Sassy. Now, how are we going to wake him up? I know, said Phyllis. Dump some snow on him. <gasps> Good idea. And it worked. Uncle Phil grumbled. It's time to get up, said Aunt Sassy. It's Groundhog's Day. I'm sleepy, complained Uncle Phil. If you're too tired, I, can, I would be happy to do the job for you, said Phyllis. Humph, said Uncle Phil. Not just anyone could be Poxitani Phil. I'm not just anyone, said Phyllis. Is your name Phil, said Uncle Phil. Well, no, but Poxitani Phil's real name wasn't always Phil either, said Phyllis. Yes, well, grumbled Uncle Phil, but you weren't born on Groundhog's Day. I know, but I was born after Groundhog's Day, Phyllis said. Not good enough, said Uncle Phil. Besides, you're a girl. When the time comes, one of those young fellows will fit the ticket. Phil Jr. 
and Pete smirked. But they can't feel spring in the air like me, said Phyllis. We've never had an early spring, said Uncle Phil. In all my years as Poxitani Phil, it has never happened once. It's gonna happen this year, Phyllis said stubbornly. Aunt Patsy chuckled. That's Phyllis, she said. Phyllis wished people would stop saying that. Phyllis, come up with me and see what the world looks like in February, said Uncle Phil. Then you'll know I'm right. Phyllis couldn't believe her luck. As they walked up the long tunnel and emerged out into the light, Uncle Phil sat up on his hind legs and sniffed the air. Just as I thought, he said, six more weeks of winter. Early spring, insisted Phyllis. Look at all that snow, said Uncle Phil. Feel the cold. The snow is melting, said Phyllis. The water is running in the brook. Uncle Phil tilted his head and listened. Hmm, so it is, he said softly. I don't hear so well as I used to. And the chickadees, they're singing their spring songs, said Phyllis. Hmm. I've never heard chickadees on Groundhog's Day, said Uncle Phil. And look, Uncle Phil, look, no shadows. My eyes aren't as clear as they used to be, said Uncle Phil. And don't you smell the sweetness of spring, asked Phyllis. Uncle Phil sniffed. <laughs> oh, just a hint, he murmured. And there's something else, said Phyllis. She had finally figured out what had felt different about the air all morning. Feel the wind? It's from the west. It's the spring zephyr. Well, I'll be a jiggered, said Uncle Phil. Phyllis was right, Uncle Phil announced when they returned to the burrow. We are going to have an early spring. It's time for me to retire. But who will be the next Poxitani Phil? asked Aunt Patsy. I'll do it, said Phil Jr. No, 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 it will be me, said Pete. Oh, I'm sorry, boys, said Uncle Phil. You two missed the signs too. You can't mean, blustered Phil Jr. Yes, boys, said Uncle Phil. It's time the best Phil for the job is Phyllis. But what about the rules, whined Phil Jr. and Pete. If Mother Nature can bend the rules once in a while, said Uncle Phil, then so can we. Phyllis heard the water in the brook and the song of the birds. She saw that there was no shadow and she felt the spring zephyr. That's Phyllis, her mother said proudly. Phyllis grinned and said, Poxitani Phyllis. The end. Happy Groundhog's Day. Bye, friends.